I personally think that people spend way too long on introductions on YouTube videos. So in this video, I'm going to do two things. Number one, I'm going to shamelessly plug the Minecraft servers that some friends and I host free for anyone to join. You can find all the information about that in my Discord down below. And second, I'm going to show you step by step exactly how to create your own Feed the Beast Revelations modded Minecraft server. Since this video has no sponsor, I wanted to take a quick second to tell you a little bit about a project that I've been working on. Every single video on my YouTube channel that has done even remotely well has either been centered around my home lab or around Minecraft. And because of that, I started thinking, what could I do to combine these two subjects and provide something to you, the viewer, that would actually be valuable? The more I thought about it, the more I realized that it could potentially be relatively difficult for somebody to run both a dedicated server and the client side of a mod pack at the exact same time. And so I realized I already have the hardware thanks to my home lab to be able to run a whole bunch of these servers at the same time. So why not set them up and just let you guys use them? So that's exactly what I did. I currently have one vanilla server and five different mod packs set up that are completely free to use. I have plans to set up over 20 more that will be coming out soon and again will be entirely free to use. The goal of this project is simply to allow friends to be able to play with each other on a server without one of them having to take the incredible performance hit of actually having to run that server for themselves. Again, this is totally free, so please feel free to share the server information with whoever you think might actually use it. Okay, back to the video. So step one is you need to get the server files for Feed the Beast Revelations. There's a couple different places you can get it from, but the easiest is the Feed the Beast app. So the easiest way to download that is to go to Chrome, Firefox, or Internet Explorer, whatever you use, and just type in Feed the Beast app. It'll be this first link that pulls up, and it'll have a link in there for you to download for Windows. Now, once you download this, you can keep it and install it. Because I already have it installed, we'll go ahead and skip over that. Now this does install as an extension to Overwolf. So in order to open it, you find the Overwolf icon and then click on the Feed the Beast app. From inside the app, all we have to do is go to Browse, search for Revelations, click on it. You have to select this Versions button right here, and then it'll show you the server files. All you have to do is click that link. It'll pull up another URL for you to select your operating system. In this case, we're doing Windows, and it'll download the server files for you. So you select Keep, run the file. So after it downloads all the files, I would recommend creating a new folder somewhere and calling it Feed the Beast Revelation so that you can store all of the files for this mod pack inside of this folder. Next, go ahead and move the file into the folder you just created. Now from here, you really don't have to do a whole lot. It's basically going to download Fort, download all of the mods that need to be installed on it, and go ahead and put this all in the folder for you. All right, once you have your folder created and your server install file put in the folder, you're next gonna wanna go download Java. Now, the easiest way to do this is just go to Google and Google Java 8 download. It's gonna be the first thing that shows up on the list. And all you have to do is scroll down here until you find your operating system that you're running. In this case, it's Windows 64. So you're gonna download that installer. Once you select it, you're gonna wanna hit keep so that it actually downloads. Once it downloads, you're gonna wanna double click it to run. In this case, I've already run it, so we should be good there. And once we've done that, we shouldn't need Chrome anymore, and we should now be able to double click the server install. It's gonna ask where we're gonna to wanna to install it. If we wanna install it just in the root of wherever it's stored currently, we can just hit enter. If we would like to create another folder, in this case, I'm gonna create one called FTB space REV for Feed the Beast Revelations. Uh, and that's gonna create the folder and it's gonna put all the files inside of there. It'll ask you if you want to continue, and then it'll basically take over and do absolutely everything for you. So from this point, it's actually downloading and installing all of the mod packs, and you really don't have to do anything. It's very, very hands off. Now, once it finishes installing, just like that, it'll disappear, and then we can go into the folder we just created. Inside of this folder, there's going to be a start.bat. We're going to want to double click this. It'll ask us if we want to agree to the Mojang end user license agreement. You have to do this for basically every server you install. I uh, just put in a Y, hit enter. I do want to add that it does take a quite a bit of time for modern Minecraft servers specifically to start up, mostly because they have to load a ridiculous amount of stuff, especially the Feed the Beast mod packs. There are so many mods in there with so much information that it has to load up and have ready uh, basically at a moment's notice. So it does take a little while for it to start up. Okay, so from here, once it gets done, I think these last lines are the Thomcraft um, stopping aura threads for a couple different dimensions. Once it's done with that, we can do a couple of different things that we really need to set up prior to actually getting on and using the server. So the first thing is we wanna make ourselves a server operator on the server so that we have full control uh, over the server itself. In order to do this, we do four, we do OP space and then whatever your Minecraft username is. So in my case, it is Joe, the one who wins. 
And so that right there just shows that I became a server operator. So the next thing we need to do um, is I kind of want to change a few things in our server properties file. The reason for that is because I don't want 20 people actually joining the server. I actually really don't want any more than eight. So we're going to set the max players to eight. Uh, the next thing that's important to note is what your server port is. The default for Minecraft is always 25565. I'm not actually going to have this server out to the public, so we won't have to change this. The one I'm doing on Linux, we will. Other than that, if you want to, you can change this, this bottom line right here to whatever you want. It's basically the second line that you see on your multiplayer uh, server list. So the first line will always be what the user enters. So on most of mine, I put friends there because they're the servers we set up for our friends. And then the second line I usually put on here as John's server. Now, anything else you want to change inside of here, you absolutely can. Those are usually just the things I change. Make sure to save it and close it. Other than that, there's really nothing you have to do. In order for those changes to take effect, you will need to stop and start the server again. So you can just type stop in here. It'll shut down the server. So there you go. That is the entire process for how to create your own Feed the Beast Revelation server on Windows. It's a really easy process. Uh, I feel like I covered all of it. There are going to be some hiccups. Not every single server is going to work exactly the same. Uh, but if you have any questions, please feel free to leave those in the comments down below. It is also important to note that in order for people to join that are not currently on your local home network, you'll have to set up port forwarding. I would make a video on this or I would mention it in greater detail, but the process is very specific to each router. So what you'll probably end up needing to do is Googling or looking up a YouTube video on how to do that for your specific router and then doing it for port 25565. That's the Minecraft port. Now for somebody that wants to join the server that you just created, all they have to do is download the Feed the Beast app like we just did do the exact same process where they go to browse, they search for revelations, uh, and they find the server. Then they can hit the install button, it will download it, they can hit the play button then, it will start the actual game up on their computer, and then they just have to put in the public IP that you will give them. In order to get this, all you have to do is Google what is my public IP, and the very first link literally is what is my public IP. It'll tell you what it is, you can give that to your friends, and your friends will be able to join your Feed the Beast Revelations Minecraft server. All right, so the next video we're doing is how to set up a Feed the Beast Revelation server on Linux. If you're interested in that, please feel free to go check it out. Again, if your computer isn't quite strong enough to handle a server and playing Feed the Beast Revelations at the same time, please feel free to join my Discord. There's gonna be a link over there where you can play on my community server uh, and have as much fun and all of your friends can play as well. I also just want to throw it out there. If you made it this far in the video, clearly it was helpful and you kind of enjoyed it at least a little bit. Please feel free to hit that subscribe button, like the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.